Can you tell us a little bit about how mindfulness changes the neurobiology of fear? Sure. One of my um, favorite ways of describing this is from my a colleague and friend, Dan Siegel, who many might have heard of. And he uh, has a kind of metaphor of the hand as a brain. And if you see my hand here, if you close your fist, this is your brain. And if you start looking at it, inspect it, you see the wrist, this is the brain stem or the spinal cord leaning into the brain stem. And my thumb is the amygdala and the limbic system. And the four fingers are the frontal cortex. And the way our brain processes stimuli is that information comes up the spinal cord and it, and it goes in and, and the brain stem and the limbic system operate together to kind of work with arousal. And then there's a kind of down regulating that happens from the frontal cortex that lets us know, well, wait a minute, that was then and now is now and maybe we don't need to react this way. So when the brain is integrated, when everybody's communicating, uh, we're in good shape. Well, what happens when we get stressed and we're not in balance is really interesting because the information comes up, but because we're not really in communication with an integrated brain, you get the stimuli saying, warning, warning, and we flip our lid. You know, we basically lose contact with the part of our brain that has perspective, the part of our brain that's the site of empathy, the part of our brain that's really the site of our moral capacities. When we get triggered and we get caught in fear, we lose access and then there's just a subcortical looping going on. In other words, we're basically hijacked by our survival brain. So what mindfulness does, and this is the key, is it strengthens the activation in the frontal cortex, and it helps us to reintegrate our brain. So in a moment when we're off, if we can have enough remembrance to notice what's happening and to do a little bit of witnessing, we begin to come online again. Tara, that was one of the best explanations of brain integration that I've heard. You know, we talk a lot about... Um, that, that, that the brain needs to be integrated. But so many times we're, um, <clears throat> we're not really clear on what did we mean by that. And thank you. That was, that was really helpful. When we start cultivating the muscle of mindfulness, we actually are able to sustain our attention on what's right here, on the wave of the moment, without distractions. There's this ability to remember to be here. And when there's that quality of heart, there's space for the wave to move through. So in terms of the brain, uh, mindfulness directly uh, activates the frontal cortex. And I'll give you an example, Ruth, and all of you who are listening, which is to me a really interesting study that found that a main uh, strategy in mindfulness, which is naming what's here, UCLA discovered that when we name an emotion, um, that the that it activates the frontal cortex and it deactivates the limbic system. In other words, we're able to occupy more of that mindful witness and be less tossed around by the waves. And in a similar way, when we're able to regard what's going on with that presence and with that heart capacity, uh, again, rather than that um, limbic hijack, we're able to inhabit a more whole and integrated sense of our being. 